What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Stella Ray Herself podcast. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode 154, and today I wanted to discuss kind of a trending topic. I feel like within the past year or so especially, but especially, especially within the past couple weeks, and that topic is our BBLs and fillers, especially among celebrities going out of style. So as always, you can listen to this podcast on all platforms. Don't forget to take a screenshot of you listening, post it on your IG story, tag me and follow my podcast IG at Stella Ray Podcast. I love seeing all your posts and thank you so much for the love on the past couple podcasts. I really appreciate that. So let's just dive right in. So for the past however many years, I feel like really since the rise of the Kardashians, this specific body type, just that classic hourglass, shape, the big boobs, the tiny waist, the big butt, but the legs aren't too big, but they're not too skinny, but sometimes they don't match the butt. It's giving Fashion Nova model, it's giving the original Kim K. I feel like 2015 was not the year it started, but I feel like, you know, that was when Kylie Jenner probably first got her body done, you know, the King Kylie era. And that was when I feel like it officially got very mainstream. It's definitely been popular, I feel like especially in hip hop culture for a while. And I feel like as hip hop has gotten more mainstream, you know, we have these celebrity women dating these artists, that kind of helps you know, make this a little more mainstream instead of it just being popular within a specific subculture or community or genre. Because, you know, for the longest time, I feel like especially in white communities, it wasn't attractive to have a big butt, you know. All throughout the 90s, the early 2000s, I think of Playboy and I think of the show Girls Next Door. All those girls, all the girlfriends of Hugh Hefner, they were always white. They always had really big fake boobs, tiny, tiny skinny bodies, and, you know, basically no butt. And that's kind of changed. Not to say some people don't still want that look or that that look isn't still popular within certain groups, but I feel like overall, you know, it's all about the ass. I feel like it definitely started with hip hop though. You know, I think of Nicki Minaj. Super Bass was released in 2010, you know? So it's that mid 2000s, beginning of the 2010s where this starts to be very mainstream. And I feel like also with social media, you know, you have these girls who are in the strip club. They're able to reach this certain level of celebrity status that I feel like in the past probably wouldn't have happened, you know, without social media. These women are able to garner their own followings. I think of Bernice, she's like an OG, you know, came from the strip club. I think of, you know, Amber Rose. I think of Black China. Cardi B is a great example. She's talked about how she worked in the strip club and she needed the bigger ass, you know, to make more money. So she got illegal injections. So this has definitely been going on for a while. And I feel like it's only for the past few years that it's become very mainstream. And I feel like more socially acceptable as well. And though not completely, it's weird because I feel like people admit to having their boobs done all the time. But when it comes to getting your butt done or getting your body done, it's still a very like sensitive subject. There was a clip. I don't watch The Real Housewives of Miami, but it would come up, you know, on Peacock or whatever. Larsa Pippen and one of the girls asking her, like, did you get your butt done? They're all, like, talking about, like, she definitely got her body done and she won't admit it. She's just talking about, well, I'm in the gym five, six days a week. And I feel like that's part of it, too, you know, because plastic surgery, especially getting your body done, is so taboo. People, of course, don't want to admit to it, but then that perpetuates these unrealistic expectations of what women's bodies should look like. And this person's saying they got it from the gym, but... It doesn't really look like it, but it's like, oh, can I get that in the gym then? And then when people admit to it, you know, they get so much hate and backlash. Oh my God, you're promoting, un you're still like promoting unrealistic standards. You're setting such a poor example for your fans or for other women. But then if you have your natural body and it doesn't fit these perfect, you know, guidelines, which many people don't, most people don't, then you're also going to be shamed and bullied. So it's just like the whole thing of women's bodies even being a trend you know, bro, it's gone on for so long. Think of the olden days corsets and when they wore those things on their butt. And so I definitely have mixed feelings when people say, oh my God, I'm so glad BBL culture is over because I feel like often, sometimes, some of the time, people are just glad that being skinny is like in again, which is no better. I've literally seen tweets, oh my God, I'm so glad being thick isn't in anymore. It's like, what about people that look like that naturally. Oh, well, I'm so glad like they're not socially acceptable anymore so I can be socially acceptable and be skinny. And that's why I think it's just so important to 
get to a place of body neutrality. I wish society could come to that place because it's definitely hard to reach within yourself, you know, when we're constantly bombarded with these messages, both outright, like men literally tweeting like, she's built bad. <laughs> But then also so subconsciously, you know, just what the media we consume, who we look up to, who's considered beautiful. So then going off that point too of people not disclosing when they've had work done, I've talked about that before on this podcast and it's like, you can't even really blame people, blame women because again, it's kind of a lose-lose, especially if you're a celebrity People are always talking about you, talking about your looks. You're always on camera. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. People are, again, going to critique you. Oh my God, why can't she just gain weight? Oh my God, why can't she just lose weight? Oh my God, why can't she do this? Oh my God, obviously her styling team did not do a good job dressing her in this one. Or, oh my God, she's so fake. Oh my God, she'll never disclose that she had work done. Or if they do disclose that they've had work done, which I think Cardi B is a great example of that. People just want to judge them. Oh my god, she just changed so much. She's so fake now. She's gone Hollywood. It looks too much. It looks unnatural. And while I don't think, and this is also something I've talked about on this podcast before, I don't think plastic surgery is inherently feminist. You know, that's very choice feminism. Just because you can make a choice does not mean that it's... <laughs> feminist like sorry especially when the choices you're making directly uphold patriarchal standards for women's bodies and you know beauty but it's like i get it you know within patriarchy it's like, it's like cardi b said if you had a bigger ass you would make more money in the strip club so it's like this fine line of participating in it but then also like understanding it and working the system which not to say everyone has to do that but it's like i get it you know and it's so annoying to see people especially men tweet things like oh my god i wish girls would just be natural and natural bodies for the win when it's like you guys hate on natural bodies all day and the women you thirst following on instagram the women that you idolize and like wish that you had all have this specific body type so then you're gonna bash on women for like wanting that when it's like what you like what i wish we could just like throw away the society and like start over honestly truly so i wanted to talk about this specific tweet i saw and i feel like variations of this tweet have been circulating for a while so this tweet says celebrities are removing their injections and fake body parts because they've become too accessible if you can get fillers to look like kylie and work at starbucks what sets them apart now we are definitely about to see a shift in beauty culture, mark my words. So I have a few thoughts. I think this starts with um, especially Kim K losing weight. Oh my god, she's removed her BBL. BBLs aren't in anymore because Kim K lost weight. And then more recently, Black China has been making all these posts. I think she has found God or something good, for, you know, good for her, or whatever she wants to do. Um, but she is removing the silicone that she previously got in her ass hips and got her fillers dissolved okay so number one so number one okay on one hand you can't deny that obviously celebrities are going to influence what the general population is going to strive for but also why as an individual are you letting these celebrities dictate how you feel and what you do you know it's kind of like i get it but at the same time like think for yourself also these specific examples that people are always using you know of kim k of black china oh my god whole culture is really over i think there was something about amber rose you know, kind of like stepping back. You know, these women are in their mid 30s to 40s. You know, I feel like when they came up, they were in their 20s. You know, you're going to be out, you're in the clubs, you're making appearances, you're doing this and that. But then you mature, life goes on. I'm sure they're focused on being moms. You know, like people are using like the OGs as like examples, <laughs> which I don't even think these are like the OGs, but kind of of like the social media era of like baddie, you know, Instagram models. So I don't really think that's a good point to make. I think that's just proof like your priorities change as you mature and life changes and you have kids and, you know, you're focused on other things. You're not like a rapper's girlfriend anymore, you know, you're like a mom and like you're you're busy. This whole thing of, oh, they've become too accessible, celebrities don't want to look like you. Just because the standard of beauty is maybe a little more natural now, you know, we're not seeing as many of these like huge crazy BBLs. You know, I think of the Kardashians in the 2010s. That doesn't mean they're not getting work done. And I feel like this is an effect of Gen Z and just social media changing and we want more authenticity. We want to see the posts of you with no makeup. You know, it's not like a 2016, you know, <laughs> fully baked face all the time, like high glam. Like we want to see your G-Wagons on IG and your close up of like your five Cartier love bracelets, this flaunting of excessive wealth and just just that excessive aesthetic 
of like 2015, 2016, etc. those surrounding years. I think the trends have just changed since then. You know, think of like clean girl makeup, everything in like pop culture, mainstream culture is I feel like for the most part these days, just a little toned down from that and more natural. So it's kind of like what I was talking about before last year with the whole, oh, I don't care about what I post on Instagram anymore. Just because something appears more natural and organic, <laughs> What am I talking about, eggs? That doesn't mean that it's not still curated. You know, and in that podcast at the beginning of last year, I was talking about how, you know, certain influencers and celebrities are kind of going along with this aesthetic of like posting so carefree. Oh my God, it's just like an off guard pic of me instead of these super curated Instagram looks with like filters and just like over the top editing. But again, just because the aesthetic's different does not mean that it's not curated, planned, and that it, they're trying to achieve a certain look. So I feel like the same could be said for filler and plastic surgery and getting work done. Like just because they're doing it a little more naturally doesn't mean that, oh my God, yeah, no one gets work done anymore because regular people can get it. Like that is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard, sorry. And I feel like that's also kind of dangerous, a dangerous way to think because if you think like, oh yeah, well nobody, that's not trending anymore. Like the average Sally Joe down at Starbucks can get filler and look like Kylie. That means Kylie doesn't want to get filler anymore. You think celebrities are just going to look like normal people, like, <laughs> as in, like, not get any work done and just be completely natural, and, like, all the time, like, I'm just thinking, I have my natural body type, I removed everything. No, like, just because maybe they're not getting, like, the huge duck lips of 2015, 2016 doesn't mean they're not getting lip filler, they're just doing it differently, it's more minimalistic. And so by thinking, like, oh, they're not getting work done because maybe they just look less extreme, it's like they're still getting work done. They're still curating these images just because the aesthetic is more natural doesn't mean it is natural. So I think that's important to keep in mind. And then the last part of this tweet, the we are definitely about to see a shift in beauty culture. I do think that's true and I do think that's already happened. Trends change and you know, if we even just, like I said, look at Instagram photos, it's a lot more regular and preferred now to post these like more natural off guard pics, like Maybe not a filter, not overly edited, and not these over edited, over filtered, like, again, just flaunting of excessive wealth and like perfectly posed. And so again, I do think it's already changed, but I definitely don't think celebrities are gonna stop getting work done because more people are getting work done. The work might be different, but it's not like there's no work and don't think that way because <laughs> it's gonna damage your brain. It's like, yeah, they, they don't edit their pics. It's like, if you believe that, like every time you see an unedited, an unedited pic of you, you're gonna like want to throw up probably, you know, because <laughs> they're editing the pics and like you think they're not. And I've talked about this before too, but I feel like a lot of this is a result of the pandemic as well and, you know, going into a recession and people just not wanting or being able to buy all of these excessive things. And especially throughout the pandemic, a lot of people were very fed up with, you know, celebrities pushing this over consumption and flaunting their wealth, you know, when people are literally dying, when people are struggling, when people lo are losing their jobs. So of course the trends and fashion and beauty and everything are going to represent that as well. And I just have to touch on this, um, this whole Ozempic thing, which if you don't know, I believe it is diabetes medication. It is being prescribed to lose weight. And apparently there's horrible side effects. People feel so nauseous and gross on it, but it makes you lose a lot of weight. And a lot of people were speculating that's what Kim K did to lose all that weight for the Marilyn Monroe dress last year. Doesn't that, was that last year? Doesn't that seem like forever ago? It's like, who cares? So a lot of people too I've seen are concerned that this really skinny aesthetic is going to come back. And I know that's triggering for a lot of us because we grew up with that being the body ideal. I think of, you know, it's again, like that skinny white blonde aesthetic of like the early 2000s. That was like body goals, like Paris and Nicole, Girls Next Door, you know, Playboy, like... <laughs> having huge boobs, but being like so, like so skinny. I'm hoping that doesn't make a return and I'm hoping that there's enough knowledge out there and people voicing, you know, people who have been through that, who are voicing why it is important to eat and there's just more information about mental health and again, body neutrality and things like that. So I'm hoping it doesn't get to that point. But yeah, I'm sure you guys saw the Gwyneth Paltrow little interview snippet. They ask her what her wellness routine is and she's talking about what she eats in a day and she's like, I like to do a nice intermittent fast. I don't eat until lunch and then I'll have bone broth for lunch and then for dinner I'll have some veggies. And a lot of people were coming for her looks. I will say she does look very thin. Her hair looks thin and she just looks very aged, which can happen in your face if you don't have a lot of fat. Who honestly looks up to Gwyneth Paltrow, honestly? Like, all I really see of her is, like, memes of her or, like, when 
like the classic meme of when she was like i would rather die than eat cheese out of a tin like that was kind of funny and i guess she smokes too so it's just like that's not really wellness i think you're just trying to be skinny and i think you have a problem probably but even just seeing all the people at least on my for you page and on my timeline talking about that and why it was harmful you know we didn't really see a lot of that in the early 2010s or early 2000s you know so i do think there's a lot more public knowledge and people are going to speak up when things like this are just like oh yeah like my wellness routine of not eating it's like that's not wellness instead of like somebody saying that and then everyone just accepting it and like oh my god yeah you're you look so good because you're so skinny you look like you're gonna fall over and break so anyway body neutrality is definitely the goal but it's definitely hard i think ultimately how you feel is the most important your health is bottom line the most important thing so if your body goals are like i want to have the hugest fake ass so i'm willing to get illegal silicone injections to do it that's not really putting your health first if you're like i want to lose 10 pounds but i'm not going to eat for a week that's not putting your health first so i think it's okay to have goals but like to be healthy about them and to put the long term first so i would love to hear your thoughts on this i definitely see a lot of mixed opinions online you know on all different little like subcategories of this subject so definitely let me know what stuck out to you and what your thoughts are so for our last topic i want to talk about aries season it is finally aries season and spring this monday was the first day of aries season and the spring equinox last week was daylight savings and this week there was also an aries new moon and all the posts i was seeing about this week astrologically were just like new beginnings manifest be delusional speak as if, you know, you can speak anything into existence this week. And I just truly feel those vibes. So this is from yogajournal.com. I just wanted to read a couple things about Aries season. Aries is birth. It is heat and passion. Aries is the inner flame that burns within us all, giving us direction and connecting us to desire, drive, and movement. It is inspiration, fierce courage, and the glorious glow of new beginnings. Aries is ensuring that we do not stand still and continue to create ourselves anew again and again and again. Beginning on March 20th, 2023, Aries season insists that we stand in each moment as ourselves and for ourselves. It nudges us to take the risk, face the fears, and muster the courage to experience this life with as much freedom, passion, creativity, adventure, and courage as possible. It acts as a reminder that we are wholly and completely worthy of our dreams and worthy of a life that feels nothing short of exhilarating and fulfilling. This is the time to honor your worth and take a chance on yourself. Period. And I've told you guys time and time again, <laughs> I feel like so much this past year since I was back home and I was like really in hibernation mode, but I truly feel like the new year doesn't truly begin until the spring equinox, until Aries season, you know, the start of that new astrological cycle. I feel like these past three months have just been, again, hibernation, reflecting on the past year, kind of planning for the year ahead, but it's kind of this like in between stage so i am just so excited y'all yeah i feel like all this astrology just really resonates with me and i have so many exciting changes coming up and i just feel really ready for them you know scared but like ready so a little tea on aries from my perspective i would love to hear if you are an aries what does it feel like to be an aries and what signs do you like the most if you're not an aries i would love to know what your sign is and what you think of aries so i'm a leo as you guys know <laughs> Have I said it enough times? Which is another fire sign. The fire signs are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. I just, in general, don't really attract that many other fire signs. Even though I'm a Leo, you guys probably know this if you've listened for a while or watched the vlogs. My chart is mostly earth. And then fire and water are basically the same amount. Like I'm over 60% earth. So that's why I have like those grounded vibes, but I'm still a Leo. So I just really get along best both romantically and platonically with earth and water signs but i will say i feel like like no shade no tea no offense in my experience aries is probably one of my least faves just because i feel like they can be a bit much for me <laughs> y'all are just i feel like i've heard it put as like aries is the child of the astrological you know world because they are the first sign and I found that to be very true. I feel like a lot of Aries can just be, I mean, you know, you could say this positively too, like very childlike, very playful, but I've kind of found it sometimes, like they're sometimes a little immature. And again, just a, like a bit much. It's like, can you tone it down, please? Like, where's my earth signs that we can just like vibe or my water signs we can just like vibe? I wouldn't say I dislike Aries. I can definitely get along with them, but I feel like they're not like my go-to. I feel like maybe if I had more fire or more air in my chart, I would connect with them a little more but i just 
I'm like, where is the water signs? Where is the earth signs? Like, that's what I need. I went on a date with an Aries and it was really fun. Yeah, like they can be fun for sure, but like it never went anywhere. Like I just feel like we didn't really truly like connect, but it was like fun, like on a lighthearted, just like surface level kind of vibe. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. I just don't have the most experience with them, so I can't really go in detail, but that's kind of my overview. So yeah, also I would love to hear if you guys have any exciting plans coming up or what your goals are for this year. This is like really the time and I just want to say if you don't have any goals or you're just kind of feeling lost, like this is a great time to do some journaling, y'all, you know, just really maybe do a meditation and just kind of let your mind wander. Focus on like what makes you feel alive, you know, what makes you feel that kind of like fiery passion, <laughs> fiery passion and goals. When do you feel the most in the zone? And maybe do a light brainstorm of where you can incorporate more of that in your day-to-day -day life. Creativity and passion, those are not things you can just kind of conjure up and like, I don't know, almost like get motivated to feel. It's like they just kind of have to come and you have to be mindful and present and realize when they are there with you or when you are experiencing them. Doing things that connect you to your body and to nature and just like to your breath, I guess that's to your body, are really going to help you access those parts of yourself and just again to be it's basically just about being mindful and present and then that comes so i hope that's helpful let me know what you thought of this week's episode and let me know what you want me to talk about next week thank you guys so much for listening and i will talk to you then bye everyone